In 1325, King Robert the Bruce granted the lands of Aberdour to his nephew Thomas Randolph, the Earl of Murray. Did you know King James IV visited Dilton Castle in 1505? It was while the Ruthven Range behind me was being built. Did you know Dune Castle was a prison? In 1746, it was held by the supporters of Bonnie Prince Charlie to imprison government troops. Some of these government troops made a daring escape from the high tower of the kitchen using knotted bed sheets. Yes, knotted bed sheets. They climbed down 20 feet and escaped from Dune Castle. One of these prisoners was John Witherspoon, who emigrated to America and became one of the signatories of the Declaration of Independence. The royal connection here in the Blaine Cathedral lies just below my feet. This is the burial place of Margaret Drummond, the mistress of James IV and the mother of his daughter, Margaret Stewart. Well, the romantic story would have us believe that James and Margaret married in secret. But in 1501, Margaret and her two sisters, Euphemia and Sibylla, were poisoned to make way for James to marry Margaret Tudor, the daughter of Henry VII, and thus establish a line culminate in James VI of Scotland, becoming James VI of Scotland and first of England. Did you know that Queen Anne of Denmark was given Dunfermline the whole town as a gift from her new husband, King James VI of Scotland, James I of England? Did you know that in the early 1500s, one of the illegitimate daughters of King James IV, Lady Margaret Stuart, was raised in Edinburgh Castle? Did you know Mary Queen of Scots and Lord Darnley visited Hunting Tower Castle on their honeymoon? Uh, this is Linlithgow Palace. This is Scotland's oldest royal palace. Uh, a lot of people know that it was the, the birthplace of Mary Queen of Scots, but did you know it was also where her father, James V, was born? And yeah, he was certainly very fond of grand buildings as well. He uh, added to this fountain here, which is the oldest one in the whole of the UK that's still in its original position. And he also built the grand entrance, which visitors still walk through today. Uh, yeah, he'd be very much a Renaissance king. He had a court full of musicians, playwrights and poets, and he even had a keeper of the royal parrot. Now, yeah, we don't have any birds quite as exotic as that in the palace these days, but we do still have his fountain, which you can see turned on on special days in summer. Did you know that in 1425, King James I celebrated Christmas at St Andrew's Castle, and the festivities continued until the Feast of Epiphany on the 6th of January? Did you know that this magnificent palace here in Stirling Castle was actually built, originally intended for the daughter of the King of France, Madeleine de Valois? Sadly, she never saw the palace completed. 